There it is, the black hole everybody's been talking about. And I say it absolutely, 100% proves ether. You say, well, how does that happen? I'm going to show you right now. Right there, and right there, and right there. That's the proof. You say, well, where's the proof? It's spinning this way. It's moving this way. It's impacting right there. As this concusses with the impact zone, it brightens like crazy. As it travels past top dead center, it trails back off. Now, I'm going to show you my interpretation of what's happening. All right, here's my extremely sophisticated view of the universe, and this is a black hole. You are here. Now, that black hole is moving this way into ether. All these little bitty particles are ether. What is, what is ether? What is it made out of? Why is it out there? How did it get there? What's it doing there? Is it moving? Is it just laying around? Well, let's talk about all of those things. It is particles, and particles are from everything in that there is. Everything has particles. Light is particles. And I'm going to show you this in experiments. There is no question about this. It's only being denied because of the fact that they, they have to continue to, to go back to the old school thought that light can't slow down, light can't speed up. All of that stuff is totally nonsense, and I'm going to show you that it is. What's happening here is this thing is moving forward, crushing into this particles that are in space. It's simple as that. If it's moving this way, it's hitting them. It is collecting them in front. It is creating a separation. This is getting excited, trying to crush through it. This is slipping past, still excited, and then taking the most of the particles go this way, and we get the extreme brightness going this way. Hubble was wrong because he ha he's going with, with Einstein. The light can't slow down. Light is just slowing down. Nothing's expanding away. Everything is going away. I'm going to show you that. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever when you stop and think about it in a logical way. But my, my contention is that this is what's going on. This thing's spinning like this. The whole thing is traveling through space in this direction. We're standing here. So it's not shooting directly at us. It's going that direction. Now, let's go a little deeper. Alright, the reason I'm so happy that NASA showed those pictures and they completely vindicate electron flood theory and ether because this, this black hole, there's no question whatsoever, it is impacting as it's coming forward into particles. There's no question that's impact. It's not just because it's coming towards us that we see it brighter. It is being impacted, and you can see the separation of the impact due to the angular rotation of the disk. And we have the exact same thing happening here. And we are heating up our atmosphere because of this. We are in a denser region in space, whether it's coming from the sun, because it's highly perturbated, because it's flowing through heavier, denser space or because it's just that we are hitting heavier, denser space as well. But whatever the reason, we are impacting as we spin this way, we're getting that same ripple. And every day, twice a day, you get that pushback and the barometric pressure increases. They know about this since the 1600s, they just couldn't understand it. It's because of the spinning against the particles we have pushed against us. It's as simple as that. Now, I'm starting a whole other channel about this because this is an issue. This is a lot of problems. The polar field is shifting. There's magnetic lines in the earth, in the, in the ocean. They see them in the ocean. There's stripes, magnetic stripes, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Exactly identical what is in the armature of a motor or generator. As it spins, those lines of magnetism force into these magnetic particles. They push against it. It creates heat. Simple as that. That's what a motor does. And that's what also creates the magnetic fields around our Earth. So these lines in the Earth crush against the particles out here that are negative, And they create a polarized field around it. Now, I'm going to show you in our light experiments. I, oh, I, I got proof of everything I'm saying. Proof. Not just guesses. Not just, oh, this must be this way, it must be that way. No. I'm going to show you the facts. And then I'm going to start a channel dedicated to this, to looking into the reality of 
the Bohr model is no good. The Bohr model of an atom is absolutely nonsense. You have more black, gooey, spooky, entangled nonsense. It's insanity. There are only two particles that exist in the universe. There's an upspin electron and there's a downspin positron. They add together to make protons. The protons have 1,836 particles. The neutrons that they always thought were neutrons are not. They are a proton plus one additional electron, which gives them the exact weight that they say it is, and it gives them that negative net polarity, which keeps orbital electrons at bay, and I will show you that now. This is Latham's crazy machines. He's got an electron flooded core. It's positive and negative, but there's additional negatives in there. The positive will pull the negative electron, but the additional negativeness, which I said there's always extra negatives in a nucleus, will keep that at bay. Here goes. Boom. There it is. Tractor beam magnet. It's stuck there. It cannot escape. That is quantum. As it shakes, it becomes heated. As it shakes so violently, it will sooner or later escape, and the escape is called light. When a photon or electron comes in and bumps into it, or you push electricity through, it does this. And electrons that are free will flow. The ones that are attached will sooner or later shake violently and remove themselves, which is what we call light. It's very well, there it goes, that was light. CERN says they're looking for Higgs bosons. This is a simulated crushing event of protons smashing together. They're 8,000 times heavier than the particles I work with. They create these Higgs fields. However, my fields are identical. There is only one set of particles. That's why these fields are identical what CERN is seeing. And CERN is seeing them because they are seeing chunks of particles which are nothing more than these. These are Higgs fields created by Cheryankov radiation which is created by excited accelerated particles which I'm going to show you that we did. These little spi spindly little white flakes there are bosons. They're spinning charged particles carrying a field that that slams into the unaccelerated space and creates these polar fields which is nothing more than the ether that I am talking about that exists everywhere in the universe. It's light, it's, it's heat, it's electricity, it's static electricity, it is the electrons that float attached to water molecules and everything else that's floating in the air that collects on you. It is the pathway for lightning to the earth, it is the ionosphere, it is the particles that come from excited atoms, exactly like that little tractor beam magnet. Now, to bolster my claim further, this is what CERN works with. They're very, very heavy muon neutrinos, They're, but they come from Cheryankov radiation, which is from nuclear reactors. It's, they use it to slow down the particles. I'm working with electron neutrinos. These are electrons, the smallest particles they're supposed to be, although I can show you a particle that's even smaller. And I will, uh, that's, this is, I'm showing you facts, not guesses. Cheryankov radiation, high speed, accelerated. I'm going to show you that happened. It creates electron showers when it crashes in. Like, see that? Like almost cracking glass. It's hitting atmosphere at an extreme speed. And you end up with these showers. All right, so all in all, it's a pretty exciting day here at uh, Mud Fossil University. And we are going to take on a whole new channel and all that business. I have to sort of separate this research. It's, adding the two of them together really just made a mess of everything. So um, Jody's working on another channel right now, and we'll get that up and running pretty soon. Anyway, this is the, the breakdown of what my claims are. Standard red laser light, pulsed, accelerated light, Cheryankov radiation, the interference patterns are repulsion patterns, they're not wave patterns. Cheryankov radia uh, radiation causing bosons, causing Higgs fields. Now here's the one, that's smaller than light. This is a Higgs field created by light particles. That's all. There's no question it was a light particle when it started, created the Higgs field from the light. That is what came off when a reverse spinner 
hit one of these fields and created that. These are the actual particles of light, and we see them in red and green. And these are the spikes coming off the top, just like the black hole shooting out its rays from top to bottom. Concussion of matter forces some kind of emissions. I can't account for that. I can't account for the luminescence. I can't account for the glow. I can't account for the fact that magnetism is what it is. But it is what it is, and I can see what it is. So I'm going with what I can see, and I'm going with what makes sense. And so far, I think I made my case. So we're going to go deeper into this. And I got all the figures. I mean, I got it all over here, so sort of in the dark right over. But I got it all. We're, we're, we're working the whole thing out.